Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti. I am MrPhotographer.com. Today we're going to wrap up my photo editing challenge video series by processing this raw file in Affinity Photo. Now, previously I processed this photo in Luminar AI and that's what I ended up with. I processed it in Photolab 4, On One Photo Raw 2021, Exposure X6, Capture One version 21, and I began the series by processing the image in Lightroom Classic. Now, I mentioned that today we're going to be processing it in Affinity Photo. I'm just closing all these down to give my computer a little more, a little more uh, oomph. Anyway, um, Affinity Photo is a little bit different than the other applications. Now, those of you that have downloaded my free software guide know that I don't include Affinity Photo in it. I consider it what I call a full editing application. That and Photoshop are in a different class of apps compared to Lightroom, Capture One, and all those others I mentioned. I consider it a different class app because not only will it process images, but it also has a lot of graphics capabilities as well. So you could do text and graphics. Um, case of some like Photoshop, you could do 3D imaging and things like that. You have full layers capability, full masking, full blend modes. A lot of those features aren't found in these other applications that are included in that software comparison guide. Uh, so I consider this in a class of its own, and I usually don't include it with something like Lightroom or Capture One. So I just wanted to explain that because every now and then somebody will email me and ask me why I don't have this included in that software comparison guide. It's because it really is a lot more than just a photo editing app. Now, one thing that goes along with that is it's not as easy to use. Uh, Photoshop, as most people know, is more difficult to use than Lightroom. You have to go up to the menus a lot more. You have to know keyboard shortcuts a lot more than you would in something like Lightroom. Lightroom's a little bit more intuitive. Same thing with Affinity Photo. It's a little more difficult. All right, let's just get started. I have the image, uh, the raw file in Affinity Photo. And like Photoshop, when you um, import or load an image into Photoshop, it opens up into Camera Raw. In Affinity Photo, it opens up in what they call the Develop Persona. So the Develop Persona is similar to Camera Raw in Photoshop. Now I'm going to go over here and I'm going to go directly to Shadows and Highlights. And I'm going to open up the shadows right away. And I'm going to rein in the highlights. And then I'm going to go up to uh, the Exposure section. And you can see there's exposure and brightness. And the difference is exposure is more linear. It's If I move it to the right, it's going to make every single pixel lighter by the equal amount. If I go to the left, it will do the same thing, but it's making every single pixel darker by an equal amount. Brightness, on the other hand, will be a little more uh, mid-tony. So it's going to not make, let's say if I move it to the right, it's not going to overexpose the highlights as readily. It's just opening up more of the midtones and shadows. And if I move it to left, similarly, it won't crush the shadows. It's just going to lower the uh, brightness level of the midtones and the highlights. So we'll bring that down a little, move that black point to the right a little bit. And you can see that now. It's starting to look a lot better. Let's um, go down and add a bit of saturation now, just like that tiny bit of clarity. Now things are kind of out of order compared to what I did when I processed my image in those other applications. You notice in those other ones I did tone, then I did color, then I came back and I did clarity and things like that. Well, because um, there's really those HSL color adjustments that I did, let's say in Lightroom or in Capture One or any of the other apps, they're not really here in this develop persona. So I'm doing things in different orders because I have to work with what I have. Um, so I think I'm done with the basic tab. Next to that is the lens uh, profiles. You could see it didn't find the lens. So I have to come in and man manually put it in here. Uh, this was done with a Sigma um, 24 to 70 
um, f2.8 lens. So let's just quickly try to find it. And I think this is it right here. So as soon as I click that, you could see that it corrected uh, the lens, you know, the distortions that were produced by the lens. Um, similarly, um, as I mentioned prior, there's really no noise in this image. And by the way, again, if you want to download this image in the description below this video is a link, you can download it for free and just mess around with it in whatever app you use. And uh, you'll see once you download it, there's really no noise in it at all. I will go to detail and refinement and I'll, I'll sharpen it a little bit, I guess. And I'm not going to do anything here with uh, curves, black and white. Obviously, split toning, nothing there. So I'm really done in the develop persona. Now I want to bring it over into the full affinity photo, kind of like full Photoshop type experience. And to do that, we go over here and they call that the photo persona. So we'll click here and it's going to tell me to save these changes and just click develop and it will. And now it's in affinity photos, photo persona. And you can see similar to Photoshop, it has all these adjustment layers. And there's the actual layers of the image itself. And what I want to do is I want, do want to go to that HSL right there. And I will then go to like yellow and I am going to increase saturation and bring luminosity down a little bit. Oops. And similarly, we'll go to blue and I'll bring luminosity down a little bit. And that's pretty much it on HSL. Now, if I go over to the layers uh, tab, you'll see that that adjustment layer is right there. Now, uh, pretty much, I think I'm pretty much done. You can see that um, Affinity Photo has a pretty powerful process engine. Now, you'll notice, or uh, you'll know if you watch those other videos, and by the way, I'll have all the videos I've done in this series in a playlist. And in the description below this video, you'll find that playlist and you could watch uh, the videos uh, for the different apps and how I went about using those apps to process this image. In those videos, most often I added a vignette. There's no like vignette uh, tool in Affinity Photo. So to add a vignette, uh, what I like to do is um, it's a little more difficult. Let's just <laughs> say that. But first I'm going to go up to Layer. And I'm going to go down to Merge Visible right here. And when I do that, it's just going to put a what they call a pixel layer of both of the layers below it put together, added right there. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go right here to this elliptical marquee tool. And if you long press the left mouse button, you can see there's a lot of tools there. But I want the elliptical marquee tool. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in the top left-hand corner, and I'm just going to draw out this oval and I'm going to make it oop, not like that and I'm going to make it pretty much like that all right as I try to move everything back to the center all right so I have this kind of oval here now now what I want to do is I want to invert it because I really want it um, to be have the selection of the outside of the image so to do that I'm going to hit shift command I that inverts it. Now you could see the marching ants are going around the outside of the box. And so that means the outside of this oval is selected. Next, I'm going to go up to select and I'm going to go down to feather. And you can see down here, feather selection. I'll put it up in here. Um, I'm going to feather it a lot. So you could see how it's modifying itself as I move it, like 800 pixels. And I'll click apply. So I have this feathered selection. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go to adjustments. I'm going to add another adjustment layer. We're going to go to exposure and it's adding this exposure adjustment layer here. I'll just put it right in the middle. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring exposure down. You can see how it's darkening the edges. You can see that? I probably made the oval a little bit too big. But that's kind of why it's, it's kind of difficult, right? And that's good. And then to get rid of that selection, I'm going to hit Command D. That's for, to deselect. Control D on a PC. And there it is. There's my finished image 
in Affinity Photo. So that's it for the series. I'd like to thank everyone who watched this series, uh, the few of you that did. But it was something that I think was kind of fun to do. Um, though, if you, um, again, want to practice on your own, mess around with it, uh, look at the description below this video. I'll have links uh, so you can download the image, links to the playlist, and all that stuff uh, is found below. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.